Hey yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And you go funny Mungu. And we are Funny and Jesse. Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video. But before we get into the reaction, guys, I wanna say thank you so much for subscribing. We actually go to 21,000 subscribers. You guys are super amazing. And we're about to get to maybe 30,000 because of you guys. Um, you made us just get to that point where we just look back and we're like, yeah, it's been a minute, it's been a journey and it's just a good time to live and just to be able to entertain you guys and also not even, enter not just only entertain you, uh, just to be able to share our knowledge, you guys also be able, uh, I mean, you guys on the comment section below also giving us some insights of what you uh, see, the kind of reaction we're doing and whatnot. Also, you guys just, and some of you are trying to, not trying some of you are part of it because you're also giving us the reaction to to react on and i feel like it's just part of a family where it's such an amazing to have on this platform so today we're gonna do another reaction video this one right here is uh the title goes as how pakistani muslim abdullah gonda left islam so without any further ado let's get it imagine this your whole life is Islam. You're born in Pakistan, you're taught from a young age, and you believe it. Like, really believe it. Then one day, you move to Canada and slowly your perspective changes. Even though you're Muslim, you're treated with dignity by non-Muslims. And you think, wow, we don't even do that to Ahmadis in Pakistan. You see that these are decent people. You slowly open up your mind and heart. Somebody asks you a question about Islam, so you look into it, and slowly you realize that your religion is a lie. I'm speaking about my dear friend Abdullah Gondal. We did a very emotional interview, and it was the first time he spoke publicly about losing his faith. You can see he almost cries at times. It was a beautiful discussion, and he really opened up. Here it is now. Well, Islam to me was uh, literally my whole life. At, a, at one point, like I was just everything revolved around Islam. My priority was religion, my studies and everything came secondary. I identified myself as a Muslim first, uh, uh, Pakistani later. Uh, it, it gave me this strength. And one thing I noticed, like the culture in Pakistan, uh, the society there actually uh, said it's good to practice more and more and more like they, they push it. So even as a child, as a young teenager, I always, uh, I always had a lot of confidence because people always were like, "Oh, you're so good, uh, mashallah, subhanallah, this kid is on the right path." And they'll tell my parents that, and uh, my parents were really happy, and they would make me as an example for my brothers. Like, look at him; he's going to the mosque five times a day. He's reading the Quran. He's reading the Salah. Uh, then a point came where religion just just took over my whole life. Uh, I got, I'd say, really uh, Salafi extreme uh, mentality, like no music. If I heard music, I'd literally drive fingers in my ears. So, so uh, just to jump in, uh, was this in Pakistan while you was? So you came. So when did you come to Canada? I came to Canada at the end of uh, twenty thirteen in December. Okay. Oh, there you go. It sounds much better now. 2013 December you came. Okay, so so you grew up most of your life in Pakistan. You've only been you've been here like about four years or so. Yeah, just four years. Okay, so so you became Salafi in Pakistan, but your family's not Salafi. Yeah, they're just Sunni Muslims. But yeah, I was uh, uh, well in technical terms, I was Diobandi first, and then I levitate towards Salafism. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so your family is okay with music and movies and all that? They, they were cool with that? Yeah, like they were cool with that, but they'd still identify it. It's still a sin. Like they wouldn't say it's a good thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then, so what? So how did you end up be, becoming more um, hardline, let's say? I don't know. Um, it's just like the one thing that played a lot was fear, fear of the afterlife, fear right. of death. Then when I started learning uh, like a little bit of Arabic to understand the Quran when it was being recited, and the torturous descriptions in there, I mean, I was just a child, like 15, 16, hearing like God's going to pour like molten uh, 
lead on your head and all that. So that scared me a lot. And I mean, obviously, I was told by uh, all my relatives and all my families and friends that it is, this is the absolute truth. Uh, this is going to happen. So that fear part played a lot. Uh, then uh, how I came to think that Islam is the absolute truth. There was a bunch of things that started with like listening to Dr. Zakir Naik and uh, and a few other people, Dr. Israr Ahmed, giving like you know proofs of why Islam is right, you know scientific miracles in the Quran and all that stuff. So social pressure, families pressure, and then all that put together, I just levered it towards a really extreme uh, form of Islam, really really strict. Right, right. So so how did so as you were growing up, Islam was a big part of your life. Um, you, as a kid, you know, you were surrounded by Islam, um, but were you, did you ever have any doubts as a kid? It doesn't sound like you did. It sounds like it, you just took it for granted that this is what my family taught me, this is the truth, and then you kind of, you wanted, you know, to protect yourself. Um, as a child, you know, all of us, even as an adult, we have this instinct for survival, uh, you know, and the fear of hell is something that is used against us. So this fear of hell for you and for me both, uh, it, it got you more into um, you know, believing Islam, uh, reading the Quran actually made you, you know, a, a stronger believer, uh, correct? Like so far so good? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right. And then and then you, you said you became Diobandi. So was it the local masajid over there that, that kind of influenced the path that you took? Yeah. Uh, when I started off, it was uh, more of like a Barelvi thing. But then slowly, slowly, when I learned more about Islam, you know, the, the concept of hadith, the sayings of Muhammad, how important they are, uh, I started levitating slowly towards Diobandis because they took everything kind of more literally. So you grew up, you became more religious. How Your family, did they... Were they okay with you being more religious? That's socially acceptable over there. What what um, sacrifices and choices did you make in your life in Pakistan that you know were based on Islam? Like, did you avoid working for the bank? Anything like like what? How did it affect your life being a Muslim? Yeah, um, I'll just go into a few incidents just to give you an idea how brainwashed or indoctrinated I, I was at one point. Um, I would not go out with my family to restaurants because there was background music being played at the restaurants. Right. If I did have no choice, I will go to the restaurant and I would put earphones in and listen to the Quran. Uh, I wouldn't go to weddings uh, because there was a lot of music. I wouldn't even go to like school functions, uh, like uh, like a farewell graduation party. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go to a bonfire party, nothing just because of religion. And, and over there, there's no alcohol, right? It's not even like there's drinking, right? I mean, at weddings and at like these parties, it's just music, right? Yeah, it's just music, yeah. And, and that's saying, right? And mixing women and men, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that so, also to a really small extent, like a lot of people in Pakistan still have segregated weddings, like men mm -hmm. and women sit separately. Oh, okay, but okay. I'll, I'll mention this one uh, really shocking incident, which uh, I always tell people uh, so I was really a uh, uh, really what people say nerd in school and uh, what ended Same. up happening was uh, I got uh, interviewed and became the head of the student council like a head prefect or a, like a like a like a head proctor or a head monitor of the whole school right so the funny thing was that there was an oath taking ceremony on stage in front of the whole school, there was about like 400 kids in, uh, uh, in front of me, and I was standing on stage, and the principal was a female, mm -hmm. right? Now, interestingly, she's, she's an aged lady. She's the age of my own mom. Uh, mm -hmm. she, her son was my classmate. Now, when I was on the stage, I noticed that uh, she's giving out the badge and the sash, and she has to t shake your hand and take your picture. So this hadith came in my mind that if you touch a woman who is not lawful for you, it is better to drive a nail through your head. Yeah. And I kid you not, I went up, I was the head prefect, okay? She extended her hand and I said in front of 400 kids, no, sorry, I don't shake hands with women. Oh. This was the extent I was, how serious I was taking religion. 
how, how did uh, how did people react uh, in the? How did you feel? Were you scared to do it? Were you confident? Actually, I was confident. I was happy. I thought I'm doing an amazing thing, and okay. funny enough, the reaction was 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 really uh, really weird. A couple of my teachers, uh, who were religious as well, called me after the ceremony, shook my hand, and congratulated me for standing up for the religion of Allah. Oh. One of the teachers' brother was a mufti. He had his brother, who I have no idea who he is, call me and congratulate me for doing this. Okay. So, so you were definitely living your life according to Islam. And why were you doing that? Like, okay, well, actually, you did say you were, you didn't want to commit any haram. You wanted to be on Allah's good side. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. I was okay. legitimately scared of the punishments. Like, I would get up in the middle of the night. I would cry. I would. Uh, I once. Uh, passed out out of fear of the hellfire when I was wow. reciting certain verses from the Quran, and this was me at like a seven, at uh, the age of seventeen or eighteen. Amazing, amazing story. So, so then eventually um, you left Islam. Was that in Canada or not yet? So then you came to Canada. Yeah. What happened? So, uh, well, my story was uh, I came to Canada in 2013. I was still very practicing, and I'll tell you, like, uh, <laughs> I never used to wear jeans or t-shirts. I only used to dress in like the shalwar kameez or wow. those togs. And I was really like trying to live like the most simplistic life, you know, closer to the prof uh, prophets. And when I did come to Canada, it was the, after three years, the first time I bought a pair of jeans. Wow. It was a few days before I came to Canada. And when I did come to Canada, right, uh, I rolled up my, the, the jeans as well to keep them above the ankle because Muhammad said that anything, any garment that is below the ankle is in the fire. Uh, yeah. And all of my, 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 my dresses were stitched like that as well. So I was really trying to implement it 100% in my life. Um, like I had a huge beard that came out of the other side of my fist. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could show you guys my uh, my IDs and stuff, the pictures. Uh, it's just I don't want to show them right now. It's your personal safety. <laughs> and then so what happened after that? Like how did you end up leaving Islam? Well, the way I left Islam was... Uh, I'll have to backtrack a little bit just to show you how involved I was in the community in uh, Winnipeg and what ended up ha actually happening. Mm -hmm. uh, after I came to Winnipeg, I got more involved in the community. I, uh, I was at the uh, local MSA and I was giving khutbahs, azans, and leading prayer uh, for about two years. Um, then what ended up happening was I was living close to the university. I finished my education and I moved away from it and I started working started uh, talking to a lot of people at work, and some of them were atheists, some of them were Christians. So they started asking a bunch of questions. Uh, and that had already been two years of me being in Canada, so my perspective of the world had changed. I had realized that, hey, listen, man, like treating women with respect is essential. Women are as intelligent as men. Uh, you know, there's human rights. Uh, you, don't, you shouldn't be chopping people's hands off and all that. And then when people started asking me questions about Islam, I started doing research in an attempt to answer them. Sorry to end it there, but if you want to hear the rest of it, the full video is in the description. And you can find Abdullah on Facebook. The link will be below. Finally, if you're enjoying this content, please consider supporting me. Monthly support allows me to plan my efforts and gives me a financial base that I can use to spend more time and energy on this project. Currently, I have just 30 monthly supporters on Patreon and a few on PayPal. 
each and every one of you who is donating, I appreciate you so much. Please help me to increase that number. If you can't afford a monthly donation, please consider a one-time donation. I will link to my support page below. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and continue being a part of this journey. This is Abdullah Samir signing out. What do you think? What do you think about the whole thing? Um, I mean, good for him if he left Islam or not. Do you understand? He said he left it, so good for him. But one thing is, it's the same as culture. Once we get exposed to something else that makes us think that what we're practicing is too strict or something like that, and we actually accept that international thing that we're seeing now, we lose our way. Even if you're going to go to another country, I always say don't forget who you are, don't forget where you come from, still practice um, what you grew up practicing. Sometimes, yes, people practice things that are harmful. You don't have to, but it shouldn't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Otherwise, um, it's good to get exposed at a young age. I mean, for those that get exposed and for those that haven't, I mean, there's still time, but it's, it's better to get exposed while you're young or while you're growing or at whatever age so that you, um, you know what's out there. Don't get exposed too late in life. Then give up whatever you've been practicing because you've learned something new in life or you've seen something new in life. It's like, and, and he mentions wearing jeans. Are jeans not allowed? Men are not allowed to wear jeans? I think they allow, I think it's just the culture where it's coming from that, like he's never seen anyone wear like a jeans. Maybe it can be this other type. Or of, maybe they wear those clothes yeah, up theirs. Yeah, no jeans, jeans, you know, they're no, those I know, trousers, yeah. yeah. The light ones. Yes, those ones, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's such things. Maybe, I don't know, because I don't even know. What do you think, though? Um... The um, the whole thing is that the question is if this guy hadn't left Pakistan, he would have seen be a Muslim by now. I think so. So, um, and I'm not saying this just to every. I mean, every, there's a reason to everything. Do you understand? Your journey is different. People have different experiences. You know. So I wouldn't want to judge him. I wouldn't want to be like no, no, blah, blah, blah. So you change your religion because you went to Canada and you saw things are different there so you decided to blend in with what they um, they believe or what they or what they dress in and what they think about life how the society uh, thinks about everything um, I think uh, one way or the other everybody has gone through that phase if you leave I mean if you leave if you leave your country maybe if you leave um your village you go to um, a modern um more set up developed. more developed place or a more set uh place where there's more um exposure you know you tend to learn so many things and you find yourself picking one or two things out of those things that you learn then what comes in is that you tend to forget where you come from and that's what has been happening in in, in in our you know in our homes in our culture where we come from lots of people have actually stripped down their culture to follow the western culture where it, it has been so much advertised in a way that you can't even miss it it's just everywhere when you go to africa when you turn on the tv you see any every, anything you see, everything you see on the television is just westernized so, um, in some other countries, you don't tend, I mean, you don't have, I mean, it's, it's not much advertised. Uh, countries like Asian countries, you find that the Western culture is not that advertised. So, imagine this guy coming out from Pakistan, going to Canada, just, just like a culture shock, you know. So, I, I, I feel like being, being in his shoe, 
you've been a Muslim throughout and then one day you just go to a country where things are different even your Muslim brothers and sisters are acting different you know they're not that uh, strict. strict religious you know and then they start looking at you like an old one you know I mean being being in that kind of a group you'll find yourself just trying to you find yourself derailed so I'm thinking that's what ha really happened to him but still that's that's his own decision he decided to do that um, but I feel like it's not it's not uh, it's not enough reason to it to is. leave Islam I don't know it is just like um, the way we dress mm -hmm. imagine we're coming from the village we wear cow skin you're telling me if we go to the United States, we won't change the way we dress? Of course it will change. We're going to be influenced by what we see, yeah. also to fit in, also to enjoy what they enjoy. Because they for you to be able to fit in a society, you have to dress like them, be like them, act like them, you know, talk like them, move like them, you understand? That way, people are going to be like, ha, ah, you're one of us. But imagine you're going to a place where you wear a cow skin. People will want to... You'll be a unique person, yes, but in most cases, people will want to avoid you because they don't want to be with someone who has a cow skin. Not that they don't want to, you know? they don't know what that is. No, I, again, I mean, why would I work with someone who has a cow skin when it's, it's, like fully, it's, it's like fully naked and all those kind of stuff at some point? I mean, I see what you're saying, but... Um, it feels like outdated, you know. People start looking at you like you're, you're still backwards. You know, people have moved on. It's 2022 now. We still wear cow skin, you know. But I feel it's 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 pressure, peer pressure. It's um, society making you feel out of out of place at some point. I understand where he's coming from, but I, for me, especially I feel those are not young, enough reasons. Especially you know. if you're young and you're going to university, yeah, you're yeah. alone, no one to guide you, no parents to check you, yeah. you do as you like. Yeah, so, I mean... But then looking at this, we don't know when this was posted, do you understand? You said he left After some in 2014. Time, as you grow up, you see that this is actually what influenced me. If you're one of those people that are actually self-aware. No, I, I feel, okay, this is how I think probably happened. Because the thing is, um, you know, if you're staunched um, religious, I mean, if you're staunched a person who's, uh, who's in religion, yeah, you're only meant to think one way, you know. So the critical thinking doesn't even come in at, at some point. So I'm thinking when 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 you came out of that cocoon where you have just to think like that, then you went to a place where you just have to to open your mind and see things. You don't have to be that kind of person. We're so rigid to just one particular thing. I think when he started opening the mind and started thinking widely about things, about even just people and whatnot. That's why exposure comes. Yeah, in. exposure. So you're meeting different cultures. Yeah. <clears throat> Once you go parts. out there and you meet different kind of people, you, you 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 understand that the world doesn't revolve around you, you know, or doesn't just uh, revolve, revolve towards, what towards what you know. Because exactly, what you, you know, know is destroyed. You have to learn yeah. new things. So you kind of try to empty what you know and then give space to what you don't know. So mm. at some point. But no. Not everyone is going to accept that. I know, but um, what you learn and how and you learn and learn what you 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 learn so that you give people enough. say, but not everyone is going to follow that. Exactly. For example, our parents they won't conform to society's whatever not just because they've moved abroad. They'll still go with what they been brought up with. Do you understand? So and time is changing. Everyone has a choice to decide what they want to be. You know. And I think maybe he, he felt like I have a choice to decide who I want to be. You know, again, um, of course, you're being brought up in a Christian family, Muslim family, automatically you're going to be a Muslim.
I think yeah. people uh, are, are going to be a Christian. I feel uh, people should have a choice at some point, but I think when it comes to choices, it has to be looked into it in a very critical way because sometimes you, you as a person who is growing up, you're thinking that you're making the right decision, but it's not actually what you think it is sometimes, you know, but you just have to go with your instinct. That's why you have to, I think, I th not instinct, you have to go with, with, with um, not instinct, you have to listen to your forefathers or maybe your people who are guiding you towards that success, your parent. Your parents are in this thing that you're complaining about. Yeah, I mean... What I wanted to add to what you're saying is, at the end of the day, just because you want to choose differently from what you've grown up with, mm -hmm. from what your parents believe, just don't believe to or say something bad about what you've been practicing all these years. Yeah. Just move on with peace. Do you understand? Yeah. I think people find the littlest, uh, the, the negatives in, in, in into these religions and they it's tend to go out there and, and make it even more worse. Why can't we all find positive things and stick to that? You know, let's find positive in everything that we do and stick to that. We start debating about oh how how Islam is this or how Christianity is that. Why can't we just find the positive things? Let's eliminate those negatives. Remove. You know, yeah. yeah. Let us know if there's anything you want us to react to. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in our next reaction video. Deuces.